thank you all for coming out and welcome to Grace Community Church Wednesday night service. And thank you for tuning in online if you're watching online. My name is Wade, if you don't know me. And uh, I'm glad you're watching. And I'm glad you're here if you're here in person. Let me go ahead and open us up in a word of prayer before we get started. Father, I just thank you for another opportunity to, to get up here and share your word. And Lord, we're, just, we're all just so busy all the time. We've got a, a million things going at once, it seems like. And I just pray that you'd help us to just calm down for a little while and just let your peace come upon us, Lord, and help us just focus on you for a little while and hear what it is you have to say. So we just turn this over to you, Lord, and we just ask that you would speak through me and let nothing of my own opinions come out but just your truth. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so uh, if you were here last week, we talked about compassion, or really we talked about uh, the lack of compassion that we see in the church today, not just this church, but all over the world today, and how it's impossible to show compassion towards somebody or something that offends you, and how if you are offended at somebody, chances are you're not going to have compassion towards that person. And how ultimately, if we're offended towards somebody or some group or something, then we probably won't be willing to, to share the gospel with them. And how that's the, one of the tricks of the enemy, you know, to get us offended at somebody or, or a group of people. And that way we'll just ignore them all together. Uh, if you missed that sermon last week, you know, we went into a little depth about how compassion is really grace and mercy combined and how that's what God did for us through Jesus Christ. If you did miss it, I would urge you to go back and check it out on YouTube or, or the podcast or online. It's out there on one of those platforms if you, if you do want to check it out, and I hope you do. It revealed to me some areas in my own life, you know, where I was withholding compassion that I should have been showing because I was offended or judgmental, or even, you know, sometimes we get to feeling self-righteous or better than sometimes, and uh, it's a good study to do to see if, if you're having problems in some of those areas. It's a humbling study to do on yourself, but if you'd like to check that out, it's out there on, on one of those platforms, and uh, that's how we ended the, the service last week. It was kind of like homework to take a look at your own life and see if there are areas in your life where you're, you know, withholding compassion from somebody or, or some area in your life because you're offended by it or them. And uh, I hope you did that, and I hope God did reveal some things to you that you can work on in your life. The verses that we ended last week's service with were Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. And those are good verses to pray if you're, you know, if you're really wanting to take a good look and see if you're offended anywhere, God will show you, you know, if you'll go to him in prayer and be honest with yourself and with him, you know, and pray these uh, verses here. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So if, you, if you're not sure if you're offended or not, you know, go to God and ask him to show you, and he will. And uh, that really helped me, showed me some areas that I need to be working on. So I hope I hope you'll do that too. Uh, this week's message, it kind of stems from that. I was thinking after last week's message that there's a, and he mentioned it at the men's conference we went to too, so that just kind of reinforced me thinking about it. There's a verse in the Bible that says, with every temptation, God gives us a way of escape. And, uh, you know, being offended in an area is the same as a, a temptation. You know, once we're faced with it, then we have a choice of what we're going to do with it. And every time we're tempted or every time we're offended, God gives us a way of escape, you know, to not be offended or not give in to that temptation. In 1 Corinthians 10 in verse 13, it says that there has no temptation taken you 
but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation or with the offense also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. And God does give us a way of escape, but he doesn't, he don't force us to take it. Just because it's there don't mean we're going to take it. God always gives us one, but he leaves that up to us. He won't force us to take that way of escape. But like I said, God always gives us one, but we have to look for it. You know, if God's word says that he provides one, it is there, but we have to look for it. And then we have to to choose to take it. Like I said, God's not going to make you take it. That's a, a choice that we make, whether to, to take it or not. And it seems like most of the time when you hear somebody preaching on this verse, that we always link it to, a, you know, addiction or drinking or sexual sin or, or something like that. You know, when we talk about temptations, those seem to be the things that come to mind or the things that you usually hear somebody preaching on. But, uh, you know, every time we talk about temptation, we automatically go to sins of the flesh. But if we go back to the verses before that and look at the context of those verses, uh, Paul is talking, he is talking about sins of the flesh too, but he's putting more emphasis on spiritual sin and not sins of the flesh. You know, in order to sin in the flesh, we first have to give in to spiritual sin before it ever becomes a sin of the flesh. We make up our minds to sin before it ever becomes, you know, an action. We make up our minds to do it. Before it's a sin of the flesh, it's a sin of the spirit. So our sin starts in our hearts before it ever makes it to our bodies, and we'll read that in uh, 1 Corinthians, same chapter, in verse 6 of chapter 10. Paul says, now these things were our examples. And he's talking about the children of Israel and what led them to sin. It says, to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. So all the, the physical sin that they were committing in the flesh it starts out in our minds. It's, it's our lust that begins in our hearts. And the lust is what leads us to sin. Lust starts in our hearts. Uh, in the book of James, chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, that's what James is talking about. This is where it starts. In verse 14, it says, But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And the when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. So all those things, before we ever act on them, before they become sins of the flesh, they start out in our minds. They start out in our hearts. <clears throat> and that's where we need to be making our choices, is what, while they're still thoughts, before they become actions. And then they become sins of the flesh and and then we've got all these circumstances to deal with. And Jesus addressed that too in uh, Matthew chapter 15, verses 17 through 20. Jesus said, Do not you yet understand that whatsoever enters in at the mouth goes into the belly and is cast out into the draft? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders and adulteries and fornications, thefts, false witness and blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defiles not a man. So all of our sins of the flesh, they begin in our minds, they begin in our hearts. And when I started studying this, you know, it really blew my mind. It's all through scripture. All through it, it's talking about how sin starts in our hearts. You know, you can read through Proverbs, and it's just verse after verse after verse of guard your heart and bind these things on your heart and protect your heart because that's where that's where sin begins. It starts in our hearts or, or in our minds. 
You know, if you're familiar with reading the Bible, they're pretty much the same thing. The Bible refers to our mind and our thoughts as our heart, and it refers to our heart as our mind and our thoughts. But when we're talking about, you know, temptation and stuff, we, we seem to focus on the flesh. And I think that is one of the biggest tricks of the enemy is to keep our attention on our flesh and not on our minds and not on our, our spiritual being. But we focus so much on our flesh, you know, while our souls and our spirits are just falling apart. It's like Satan's like a, a magician. He wants you to look over here, you know, while I'm tearing this to pieces over here. He tries to keep us focused on our flesh so we won't, we won't notice when we're, we get to hurting spiritually. But all those sins start in our minds. And uh, while I was doing my devotions, I think it was Sunday morning, I ran across this verse, and it, it really got my attention because I'd been thinking about the one in 1 Corinthians, you know, 10, 13, where Paul is saying that God gives us that way of escape. And then I, I ran across this verse while I was doing my devotions in Psalm 118, 27. It says, God is the Lord, which has showed us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. And that, that really got my my attention you know it says to bind the sacrifice with cords to the altar and that word for cords that literally means to interlace you know like our shoelaces or or intertwine like a rope or to weave together like a wreath and uh, the reason that verse got my attention is Jesus Christ is our sacrifice you know we're supposed to bind Jesus Christ upon the altar of our hearts and that tie him to our hearts, tie our hearts to him. And I think many of us have Jesus in our hearts, but, you know, he's not bound to him with cords. And when that temptation comes, whatever that is for you, it becomes stronger than the relationship that we have with Jesus. So we become obedient to our flesh instead of to our spirit or God's spirit in us. You know, sacrifices are offered through fire. And when the temptations come, it's not easy to overcome them. And that's why Psalm 118 says to bind the sacrifice with cords. Back in those days, when they brought the sacrifice, if they didn't tie it to the altar, you know, once the, once the fire started going, then the sacrifice is going to run away because it hurts. And it's the same with us. When we go to to try to fight off temptation without the power of Christ, without the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, it begins, it gets too much for us. And if we're not bound to the altar with cords, then we're going to, we're going to run away. In our case, it's not binding the, the sacrifice to the altar. So it don't run away. It's us binding ourselves to the sacrifice, <clears throat> which is Jesus Christ. So we don't run away. You know, in those days, the sacrifice would run away. But in our case, our sacrifice don't run away. Our sacrifice is Jesus Christ. So we need to bind ourselves to him so we don't run away from him. Uh, I love the way they put it in that devotional. And I was going to try to just explain it to you, but I believe I'll just read it to you because they they said it a lot better than I'll be able to. Let me see if I can find it here. It is. It says, bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. That's the verse we just read in Psalms 118. It says, the altar means fire, burning and purification and insulation for one purpose only, the destruction of every affinity that God has not started and of every attachment that is not an attachment in God. You don't destroy it. God does. You bind the sacrifice to the horns of the altar and see that you do not give way to self-pity when the fire begins. And that's where we fall short. You know, when the fire begins, 
and this starts to hurt us when we're trying to fight that temptation, we give in to self-pity like it said there. <coughs> it begins to hurt when we resist that temptation and we're not, we're not willing to pay what it costs to resist that temptation. We're not willing to give up not only the temptation, but all the things that go along with it. You know, our temptations, our sins, they're never all by themselves. You know, they're always surrounded by the things that go with them. You know, for me, you know, a lot of y'all know my biggest problem was drinking, but drinking didn't come just all by itself. You know, you have the people that you drink with, the places where you go to do it. So we've all got different temptations, but they're not by themselves. You know, you got the people you sin with, the places you go to do those sins. You got the pleasure that you get in your flesh when you do sin. And uh, you got the temporary satisfaction in our minds when we do sin. And when the temptation comes, our minds start weighing all those things together. And a lot of times, we're not willing to pay the price to be obedient. You know, we're not willing to give up all those things that go along with our sins. You know, we start thinking it's going to cost more than we're willing to pay. So instead of looking for that way of escape, we just read about in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, we do the exact opposite. Instead of looking for the way of escape that God provides for us from the temptation, when the fire starts, we look for a way to escape from the sacrifice because it gets too painful for us and we're not willing to face it. We look for a way of escape from the very thing that will help us. And so we give in to our lust like we just read in James and uh, that leads us right back, right back into our, our old coping mechanisms or our old temptations and we wind up giving in to them. <clears throat> we give in to that lust like James says, and it leads us right back into our sin. And uh, that never brings good results. You know, I used to say that never ends well, but uh, I don't, I'll try not to say that anymore because I know in my own life, if you bring it to Jesus and uh, you let him be your sacrifice in that area, it always ends well. You know, it don't bring good results when you give in to it, but it can end well if you take it to Christ. If you bring it to Jesus and trust him and allow him to remove whatever that is from your life, it always ends well. So I stopped saying it never ends well because it can end well. All we have to do is trust Jesus and bring it to him. But we have to trust him enough to do that. And if we don't, trust Jesus, when that fire starts and that temptation starts getting stronger, we'll start trying to pull away from it. And we'll just, you know, I've done this myself. We'll say, I tried, I just can't do it. I can't beat it. You know, when that urge to give in to the temptation gets so strong that you can't resist it any longer, whether it's i got to have a drink or a drug or, or I'm going to die if I don't get it, or if you get that urge to post something negative about somebody on Facebook, or you finally give in to sexual desire, you know, you fight it until you just can't fight it anymore, whatever it is for you, if we don't, in our case, bind ourselves to the sacrifice with cords, we will wiggle out of it when it gets painful. You know, when that fire comes, because it's uncomfortable, it's too painful, or it's too expensive, and we're not willing to give up all the things that go with it. <clears throat> in First Peter chapter 3 and verse 15, it says we need to sanctify the Lord God in our hearts. So that's what we need to do. We need to sanctify the Lord in our hearts and make the decision to bind ourselves to the sacrifice, bind our hearts to Jesus Christ. And it goes on, it says, be ready always to give an answer to every man to ask you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. You know, when people ask you, you know, to come and have a drink with me or go do these things, 
we have to be ready to answer them and say, I don't do that anymore. I've surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. And if you'll do that, he'll give you the strength to fight off that temptation. But we have to sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And what that means is we have to make our relationship with him more important than our temptations and everything that goes with them. He has to be worth more to us than the things that were given up. And, uh, you know, that's a real thing for me for a long time. I just It wasn't so much the drinking. It was everything that went along with it. And I wasn't... I wasn't willing to give all that up. I wanted relief from my drinking, but I wasn't willing to give up all the other things. Like I said a while ago, you know, sin don't ever, it never comes all by itself. There's always a bunch of things that come with it. So we have to learn to trust Jesus and we have to sanctify him in our hearts. Uh, in Job chapter 13, verses 15 and 16, and this is where I had to get, Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. You know, that's exactly where I was when I wanted to make changes in my life that would get me where I needed to be in my relationship with God, but I just wasn't strong enough. And uh, verse 16 described me well. You know, he says, He also shall be my salvation, for a hypocrite shall not come before him. And I felt like a hypocrite every time the fire got going, and I ran away from Jesus and right back to the drinking. You know, I didn't trust him enough to bind myself to him and go through the fire with him. So we have to trust Jesus. And... Uh, that's a really hard thing to do for some people, especially people with a dysfunctional background that never really been able to trust anybody. You know, those people with abandonment issues, those that never had a stable childhood and always felt rejected or abandoned, they don't know how to trust people. You know, it scares them to death to think about trusting somebody. It's hard for them to believe Jesus, when he says, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. You know, it's hard for them to, to comprehend. They don't understand that. And they, because they don't understand it, they don't believe it. So it's hard for them to trust Jesus. It was hard for me to trust Jesus. But he is faithful and he is true. And uh, I think that's why so many marriages often end in divorce, because people just don't trust each other. So they don't. They don't talk to one another. They don't open up and be honest with one another because they don't trust. That's why suicide rates are so high. They're through the roof. And I, I believe that's because people don't trust anybody enough to talk to them about their problems. So they just they let them build up until the pain that they're in is stronger than the, the will that they have to live. And they're... You know, dealing with that mistrust, they won't share their problems with anybody. So we have to, it's important that we learn how to trust Jesus. He will never leave you and he will never forsake you no matter what you're going through. You know, that's why we got so many people going through addiction and alcoholism is because they don't trust anybody enough to talk about their problems or take them to God because they don't trust God enough to, to help them with them. They'd rather just mashed those feelings with drugs and alcohol and tried to hide them and ease the pain that way. That is a multi-billion dollar industry right now. You know, almost everybody in America, and not just America, all over the world is addicted to something simply because they don't trust anybody enough to talk about their problems. You know, and I, I told you a minute ago, I finally reached that point. Thank God I reached it. That I was like Job, and I, I didn't care if it killed me. I told him, I said, I'm going to trust you, Jesus. I'm all yours. I surrender, and I'm binding myself to you. And if the fire of temptation kills me, uh, then I know I belong to you. And uh, I hope, if you're listening to this, that you don't have to get to that point. I'm telling you, you can 
trust Jesus. And the, the moment that I made that decision to bind my heart to Jesus and I was willing to go through the fire with him as a sacrifice, it was the moment that I made that decision, the fire didn't consume me, the fire went out. You know, I didn't have to go through what my mind kept telling me that I would have to go through. The temptation went away. I gave it to Jesus, and, and he took it away from me. You know, every once in a while, the embers of that fire still still try to flame up every once in a while, but I just pull, the, pull those cords that I'm bound to Jesus with a little bit tighter, and uh, he never, never fails me. In those times, he comes right over and puts the fire out and reminds me <clears throat> that he's with me and he'll never leave me nor forsake me. Uh, <clears throat> I wrote this down. That that reminds me of a, like a little kid with a loose tooth and the tooth hurts, you know, and it makes life difficult. If you've ever had a, a loose tooth, it, it hurts and it makes it hard to eat because it hurts, and uh, when you got a loose tooth like that, especially the kids, they can't keep from grabbing a hold of it and wiggling it, even though we know it's going to hurt when we do that, And uh, but you just can't keep your fingers off of it. You mess with it all the time, and every time we grab it, we complain about how much it hurts until that's just all we can think about is that loose tooth. And that's the way the sin is in our lives. We know every time we give in to it, it's only going to hurt us more. But just like the little kid with the loose tooth, we don't trust anybody enough to pull it. But we can't keep our hands off of it. Even though we know it's going to hurt us, we just keep going right back to it because we don't trust anybody to help us with it. You know, a little kid with a, a loose tooth, they won't let you near them. They're like, don't touch it. And... Uh, we're the same way with our sin. We stay away from anybody that wants to touch our tooth. And uh, I know all of you parents know what I'm talking about if you've had little kids with loose teeth. They don't want you to touch them. <coughs> and we try to convince them that if you just let me grab a hold of that thing, I'll, it'll only hurt for a second and it'll be over with. And that's the same thing Jesus tells us. And it is. As soon as you get that tooth pulled, you can see the look on the, the kid's face when the tooth is out and they got just instant relief but don't hurt anymore. You know, and that thing that was causing them so much pain a minute ago, they can now hold it in their hand and it don't, It don't hurt them anymore. And uh, that is exactly what Jesus Christ is telling every one of us. You know, bring those things to me and bind yourself to me just like you tie a string around a loose tooth and we'll, we'll pull this thing out together. And it won't be able to hurt you anymore. And then... Uh, the next time you get a toothache or the next time you get tempted with sin, you've learned to trust Jesus because he, he's already helped you through something and you won't hesitate to go straight to him the next time and tell him, you know, I'm being tempted by this or, you know, my tooth hurts. Because you trust him. He's already, he's already pulled one for you and you know he can do it. You know, without a shadow of a doubt, he is willing and able to pull that thing for you. So the next time sin raises its head in your life, you won't try to hide it with drugs or alcohol or sex or, or food or lying or whatever it is. You know, because you know relief only comes when you expose it and let Jesus get his hands on it. Uh, I started going to the men's conference back in... 2016 and uh, they shared a verse that year that was one of the verses that led me to surrender my life to Christ it made a, a whole lot of sense to me 
And uh, ever since then, every year, that's been one of the main verses at the men's conference. And uh, I try to use that in my life all the time. In Proverbs 28 and verse 13, this is very true. It says, He that covers his sins shall not prosper, but whosoever confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. <coughs> So he that covers his sin will not prosper. You can't just keep putting a spiritual ambassal on your tooth. You know, it only works for a while. And even though you're dull in the pain, you know, like drinking or drugs or, or whatever it is for you, even though you're trying to dull the pain, that tooth or that sin is just getting worse and worse. And eventually, you won't be able to stand it anymore. And you'll wind up doing something about it but the last part of that verse says whoever confesses his sin and exposes it and forsakes it will have mercy you know when we bring it to God I tell you all the time when you bring it before God he don't condemn you you know we're all he's offering us right now is grace God's not out to condemn anybody he has mercy on you like the verse Right there it says. He forgives you. Like it says in 1 John 1, 9, he helps you get rid of your sin. And not only get rid of it, as far as the east is from the west, he also he cleanses you from it. So that you don't walk around feeling dirty and ashamed of your past. And I think that's, you know, what a lot of us are afraid of. If we come out, God's going to condemn us for what we're doing. And then we're going to walk around in shame because of what we've done. And everybody around us is going to judge us. And it's just going to make life worse. And just like that bad tooth, as long as we hide it, it's, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. We have to bring it to God and shine some light on it and let him get rid of that for us. He won't condemn you. He'll, he will forgive you and he will cleanse you from it. So you won't walk, walk around feeling guilty about it. All he wants to do is forgive you and clean you up and give you mercy. You know, I looked up that word uh, sacrifice in the strong concordance. And the word sacrifice, just singular, not, to, not any other form of it, you know, like sacrificial or sacrificing. But just the single word sacrifice is in there 218 times. <clears throat> but the, the translation for the definition used in this verse is only used twice in the whole Bible out of those 218 times. <clears throat> it's only used in one other verse. And uh, it's referring to Jesus. And the definition is a victim sacrificed to God. So it's specifically talking about Jesus when it says bind their you know, bind the sacrifice with cords even unto the horns of the altar. And that's what led me to saying we need to bind our hearts, the altar of our hearts. Bind Jesus to it so that we don't try to wiggle away when the, when the fire comes. The other, I told you there were two verses that had that. The only other one that has that, that particular word for sacrifice is Exodus 23. In verse 18, and it says, Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, neither shall the fat of my sacrifice remain until the morning. And that's also a picture of Jesus. Uh, if you'll read before that, that's a picture of the, the sacrificial lamb that they killed during Passover, and they took that blood of that lamb and put it over their doorpost. That way, when the, the angel of death came through, you were covered. So he's a, that's a picture of Jesus in that verse, too. It's also a shadow of Jesus dying on the cross for us so that we can be freed from sin and receive eternal life instead of eternal death and separation from God. And I love the way that uh, in that verse where God calls it my sacrifice, he says, you shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread. 
<clears throat> you know, we think of sacrifice as something that we bring to God to pay for our sins or atone for our sins. But God calls it my sacrifice. He said this is, so that is, this is God bringing the sacrifice to pay a debt for us that we can't pay ourselves. We talked about that last week. Uh, that's God having pity or compassion on us like we read last week in John 3, 16, because he knows there's nothing that we can do about the debt we owe. So it's his sacrifice, Jesus Christ, that pays for our sins. Uh, the other part of that verse, he says, Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread. Leaven in the Bible is referring to sin most of the time. And uh, we'll get into that a little bit more next week. But what God is saying there in that verse is, you shall not offer the blood of my son with sin. Just like he said in Job, we read earlier in uh, Job 13, verse 16, it says, a hypocrite shall not stand before him. So we can't mix our sacrifice and sin together. Uh, James says when we come to God, our faith has to be in God alone, for a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And there's there's just so much more in that I want to cover, but we'll have to get into that next week. I know I don't have time to, to get into it this week. But like we started out in the 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and verse 13, you know, God really does give us a way of escape in every temptation. But are we willing to let go of our sin? You know, is that something we really want? Or do we just really want relief from our sin? You know, that's what I wanted for a lot of times. You know, I thought I wanted to quit drinking. I thought I wanted to do this. But all I was really looking for was relief. I wasn't really looking to surrender anything to God. I just wanted relief from my suffering. You know, just like Jesus asked that asked the man at the pool of Bethesda in John five six. He asked him the question. It says, When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will you be made whole? And I think that's you know, that's what Jesus is asking us. Do you want to be made whole? Because like we read in 1 Corinthians, God gives us a way of escape. And most of the time, we've been in that condition a long time just because we're not taking it. It's not that we don't see it. I think a lot of times we just choose not to. You know, I've been in that condition for 45 years. And I had to ask myself that question, do I really want to be made whole? If so, uh, then you'll have to make that choice. Bind yourself to the sacrifice, which is Jesus Christ. Or if we don't, when that fire of temptation comes, you won't be willing to go through it. Change is not easy. It's, it's very expensive, and it's, it's uncomfortable. You will have to get out of your comfort zone and make the sacrifices that you got to make to be willing to pay what it costs. You know, we talked about that a little bit last night uh, during Celebrate Recovery. You know, we had some people that were being just completely honest and they said they're, they're having a hard time making decisions simply because they don't want to pay what it's going to cost. They don't want to get out, out of their comfort zone. You know, change is never comfortable and it never comes natural we got to be willing to get uncomfortable and uh, get out of our comfort zone and we got to be willing to, to let go of the things we need to let go of and pay what it costs and just like that little kid with the tooth we have to to trust Jesus that he's not out to hurt us he's gonna he's gonna do what's best for us so we need to take that way of escape that God gives us from the temptation instead of finding a way to escape the one who's trying to help us. And we have to bind ourselves to Jesus and trust him. So that's our 
our question for this week, and it's a hard one to answer, you know. That's not one you can just answer like that. It's not one you can answer fast. Uh, you know, I know you did a lot of thinking last week about am I offended at people? Am I offended at some group or something? It's hard to be honest with yourself. It really is. But this week, I want you to ask yourself, do you really want to be made whole? If you've been struggling for something for a long time, like that man by the pool, or like I was for so long in my life, you know, do you really want change? Do you really want to be made whole? And if so, the only way you're going to do that is bind yourself to Jesus and be willing to pay whatever price that is. And we have to remember that, you know, we're not, we're not the sacrifice. We're not the ones who are going to have to go through the fire. Jesus goes through it for us. And we're not the ones that have to pay the cost. He's the one that pays the cost, too. You know, I told you a minute ago, the moment I surrendered to him and told him I'm willing to go through it, he put that fire out. You don't have to go through it. God has, or Jesus has already went through the fire for you. All we got to do is trust him and surrender to him, be willing to get those things up, and he'll take them, take them away from us. So uh, think about that this week and take a look at your life and things that you're struggling with and ask yourself that question, am I really willing to be made whole? Uh, like I said a minute ago, we get, there's a lot more I want to cover on this next week, especially about the leaven being referred to as sin in the Bible. So this is where we'll pick up next week. So that's our question for this week. Uh, do you really want to be made whole? And are you willing to, to get rid of the things that you need to get rid of to be made whole? And I hope it will help some of you to, to really take a look at yourself. Doing this study has really helped me take a, a closer look at myself. And uh, there are some areas that I need to, to be working on. But that's all I've got for this week, and I thank you all for, for coming in, and I thank you for watching online. And uh, we'll pick up here again next week and uh, dig a little deeper into it and see what God has to say about it. But thank you all for coming out, and let me pray for us, and we will be dismissed. Father, I thank you for helping me to get up here and preach this. Lord, let us thank you for laying it on my heart and uh, giving me the boldness to get up here and preach it, Lord. And Father, I just pray for every heart that's hearing this and every heart that is tuning in online listening. I pray that you help us, Lord, to, to find the courage to be honest with ourselves and, and find the things in our life that we really aren't willing to give up, but we need to. I pray that you'd show us the relationships, Lord, that we we're in that we really shouldn't be in the things that we're doing that we shouldn't be doing. And I pray that you'd help us, Lord, to be willing to give those things to you and be willing to let you do whatever it is you want to do in those areas. Lord, we just love you, and we thank you for loving us so much. Please be with everybody as they're going home, Lord, and keep them safe. Lord, we just love you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>